Okay. And I want to welcome everybody here on tonight. So we want to, um, I'm checking my cell phone. I keep getting um, little things here. Okay. And so um, I want to welcome everybody. We are live on Facebook. Let me know if you hear, hear an echo on Facebook. I'm not sure uh, if I need to take take something down in my background. Is everything okay? It is right now. Okay, great. <laughs> All right. So what I need us to do so that we can go forward, I need us to um, go ahead and accept the agenda. Um, I need a motion to accept the agenda. So secretary, if you would just go ahead and scroll down the agenda and um, and then uh, we'll go from there. Good evening, Dr. Jones. Cole. There is an echo. Okay. I think I know how to fix that. Just a minute, you guys. Okay, give me just a minute. I want to fix the echo. Oh, man. Okay, if you all will accept the agenda, go ahead and, and uh, take them, uh, make a motion to accept the agenda. And then I'm going to work to um, stop the echo that may be on the website on the Facebook page. I, Madam President, uh, make a motion that we accept the minutes as presented. Agenda. Okay, it's been moved and second. By I'm Ms. sorry. I got you. By Miss Lou Lambert and Melanie Ross to accept the agenda for tonight. All in favor, vote aye in your chat, please. And if there are there any opposed. Okay, thank you very much. I think I have a, let me exit my full view here. Somewhere. I am back and everything should be fine. Okay, so we are ready to move forward. Um, Miss Marilyn raises her hand. Is that Marilyn um, and from Wilma? No, Trotter. Marilyn Trotter, Mar Marilyn Trotter. Okay. Yes. Vote yes, nine. but actually I was really a and so I actually put that that you too late. Okay. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> all right, I'm learning this time. That's Y'all all right. With me. <laughs> That's okay. We're going to get it. We are going to get it. Okay. okay. So we are going to uh, actually move forward tonight. I appreciate everybody that is here. And so, um, Secretary, pull it back to the top for me. And we're just going to go ahead and get started. Uh, this is officially opening our general membership meeting. Uh, it's called to order. Um, thank you, Chris. And we, I'm going to go ahead and do our prayer and our mission. I was just informed that Pastor Daryl Daniels Jr. is at graduation. So, uh, Father God, we thank you tonight for those who are attending. Father God, we thank you for uh, blessing us, for waking us up this morning, and for keeping us in our right minds. We pray, Father God, that as we move through this meeting, that Father God, it will be done in harmony and in unity and with understanding, Father God. You told us, Father God, if we lack wisdom, we can ask of you. Father God, if we need understanding, then we should go and search for that understanding. So we thank you tonight. Father God, that you are binding us together, oh, Father God, with cords that cannot be broken as an organization. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, our mission is the mission of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People is to ensure the political, educational, 
social and economic equality of rights of all persons and to eliminate racial hatred and racial discrimination. Now we're moving on to roll call. If you are able and understand how to go to chat, you could already start putting your name in the chat for roll call. And if you if you can't uh, put it in chat, then please um, then please let, let us know that you are online now. Let us know who you are. So the secretary can get your name. Okay, and if there is anyone on the line that happens to have a cell phone, let me uh, check my view here so that we can, um, so I can check out everybody and see if there's a cell phone number then she, we will need because guests are welcome, but we must have your uh, number. Okay. All right. I think I have everyone in. Okay. Then we're going to move forward with our minutes. The minutes were emailed uh, to everyone. And so uh, can we please get a motion to accept the minutes as, uh, as submitted by email? I move that we accept the minutes that were submitted. This is between and I second. Okay, it's been moved and second by Stacy Smith and Bettina Randolph to accept the minutes as distributed. All in favor, vote aye in your chat. Any opposed or corrections? Okay, thank you. Um, as you still may still be voting. Next, we are going to, uh, we need a motion to accept the treasurer's report as distributed as well. I move that we accept the treasurer's report as given out. Okay, who was that? That was Stacy. Okay, Stacy Smith. Now, I need a second. Dr. Allen. I'm second. Okay. All right. So it's been moved and second by Stacy Smith and Dr. Chris Allen to accept the treasurer's report as distributed. All in favor, vote aye in your chat, please. Any corrections? Okay. Next, we're moving to our uh, committee reports. I'm um, real excited about what, what, what is going on in, the, uh, in our branch. So we're looking forward to um, hearing from our committee chair. So I'm going to start with membership committee, Ms. Lou Lambert. Good evening, everyone. The membership and life membership committee report for April 2022. The committee met on April the 11th, 2022. Committee members are Annette Gardner, Bertie James, Barbara Cooper, Tara Boz, Valerie DeCento, and myself, Lou Lambert, as chairman. Members present for this meeting were Barbara Cooper, Bertie James, and myself. The above named members was present at the political forum sponsored by the branches political committee at St. Johnson Community Center on April the 11, 2022. The committee held uh, help with the registration, a table set up with voter registration and NAACP membership application. Approximately 10 members a uh, membership application was passed out to interested individuals. The committee members attended other forums scheduled for the month. One new member joined during the month of April and eight members renewed their membership. More people are finding that the online process is convenient and so more people are going online. The members of the committee are, of the committee are encouraged to vote early 
and to encourage others to get involved in the process. Respectfully submitted, Lou Lambert, Chairman. Okay, uh, next report coming from our um, Veterans Affairs Committee, Bettina Randolph. We did not have a report this month, but if Miss Lou, if you would just um, highlight what you mentioned yesterday on that event that um, your husband was part of. Yes, on April the 10th, the veterans were involved in a, um, an event that was presented at the DFW hut. A group that traveled Arkansas recognizing the Vietnam vet and they also was uh, promoting the re uh, for the veterans cemetery. Uh, and during this event, they did recognize uh, the Vietnam veterans, and several of those veterans uh, are a member of our branch. And the three that I can remember off the top of my head, of course, my husband James Lambert, Mr. Perry Rawls. And Mr. Larry Gregg. Okay, thank you very much. Um, next, we'll have the um, health committee. Good evening, everyone. The health committee met on April 7th. Committee members are Chair Zay Rader Ingram, Secretary Hazelaine McCray. Ladarian Pace, Brittany Veazey, Ebony Farmer, Lakira Simpson, and Tamara Welch. This month's meeting was held via Zoom. Meeting notes are as follows. We discussed overall um, improvement of the health committee, and we discussed um, what we are going to do for the next month for Mental Health Awareness Month. And that concludes the health committee report. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, next, we're going to have our um, Youth Works Report. Excuse me, I don't have that report in front of me. I'm sorry. That's okay. Uh, the secretary can pull it up in a minute. I know you submitted and for the life of me, it just left my mind. Uh, I think I have a copy here uh, where I'll share uh, because you all are working. The Youth Works Committee uh, pulled together scholarship applications for graduating high school students from Monticello and Drew Central. And there were 25 applications placed at each location. So I wanted to make sure that you all know that you have those, uh, they have put those out. Uh, Stacy, can you tell us a deadline? I did not see a deadline for those scholarships to be submitted. The deadline was the ninth, because we were trying to get it where we could present the scholarships to Drew Central and Monticello. Okay, okay, all right. And so happened we did not have anyone to turn in any scholarship, not even the NAACP youth that were graduating. Oh my gosh. Okay. They didn't. Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, can't say anything about that. Free money, oh. free money. Right. Right. Do you want to? I know single parent scholarship, just since we own it, I know we actually give uh, when I was serving on there would give them a little bit later. Are you going to try a little uh -huh. bit later? Okay, all right. Yes, all right. we can still do that. We can try later and see, you know, even if it's a, a book scholarship or, you know, just something. Okay, okay, all right. And we may have to promote it a little bit differently so they can, uh, get the news out okay we'll talk about that okay let's discuss that to help y'all yes ma'am okay and i think the other thing in her report is that that uh they are working on transportation to visit mississippi to visit the emmett till uh museum 
there. So if she needs any help, y'all just keep the youth in mind and let Miss Stacy Smith know uh, that you are supporting their efforts. Okay. Our next report will come from um, Dr. Chris Allen, Economic Development. Good evening. For the, uh, for this month, there's no uh, report to give for economic development. Okay. All right. And then we have Kimberly Martin for the finance chair. It's going to stand in for the finance committee. Yes, ma'am. Uh, good evening, everyone. We have, we did, the finance committee did not meet for the month of April. Okay. All right. So we have, as far as I know, we don't have a report. Okay. But I will like to reiterate something that we discussed last night from the chair. Um, she mentioned, and just want to let you, you members know um, that you'll be hearing from the branch because uh, the finance committee and the economic development committee is going to work together to for an education on wheel writing and some services that may be offered to you. So please pay attention to your emails and the announcements that go out on social media uh, once the plans have been finalized. Okay, we have AXO, uh, Constance Williams is stepping in for Belinda Wooder tonight. Go ahead, Constance. Okay, good evening again. The AXO report was emailed out. Um, so only thing that Ms. Ann wanted me to reiterate was that the gospel explosion will be June 25th. And we're also raffling um, gas tickets at the price of $5. And so I know that she asked, I think there were 10 executive board members to each sell, I mean, well, the executive board members to sell at least 10 tickets and to help us with that. And that we will also need um, volunteers and people to work. So if you're interested, just let Miss Miss Ann or myself know about that. Also, we did have an email um, form for the, the story. Um, for the vendor contract as well. And so um, I emailed out another one also that had on there where if you if they want to do PayPal or mail in a money order or give it to us personally, it's up to them. Um, but if you know anybody that would like to be a vendor, it doesn't matter if they're a food truck or sell clothes or items. We just want to attract enough people to the event to be able to make money for the AXO committees and the um, students that will be competing to help them with their costs for anything that they'll need for the uh, competition. And that's all that we had. Okay. I just want to uh, reiterate, make it clear. Um, she did uh, ask um, for the executive committee to support. Now we're asking the general body. That's why the email has been sent out that you also help them. Uh, you can print out the tickets or see uh, someone from that committee so that you can actually um, help them as well to build um, AXO is a great, great opportunity for the young people, okay? So thank you so much for that. Please pay attention to the reports. If you have vendors, as she said, uh, the tickets for the gas and for the gospel explosion, put it on your calendar and let's support our young people. That's both our AXO and our youth uh, unit, okay? Uh, our next report, I see Myosha Smith. Uh, on behalf of the legal redress team, Myosha Smith. <laughs> Good afternoon, Madam President. Uh, we have no report for this month, <laughs> but we will be getting together uh, trying to get some things rolling. Um, I talked to Chairman Pace last night, but uh, we would, do not have a report for this month, but mm -hmm. we will be meeting just to. Uh, catch up on a few things and see how everything is going with a few other cases that we did have. Okay, wonderful. And I would like to reiterate for, uh, if there is a complaint, 
uh, you all can go to our website and go to the resource page. Formally, if there is a complaint, uh, then it must be submitted. We have a procedure. So if you go to the website, which is dcnaacp6042.org, go to the resource page, then you can see the procedure, but make sure that the procedures, we, we love talking to everybody, but until you get that written down on those that paperwork and get it submitted to that team, then most, we're not gonna move. We got, we, we want to teach you how to follow the procedure that we must follow so they can do a proper investigation and move forward. Okay, I see a couple of political action team members on here. If, uh, does anyone have a report for the political action? committee. Okay. Um, yes, ma'am. We do not have a written report, but mm -hmm. we did meet briefly, you know, before our uh, forum in April, we met and set up the chairs and set up the tables. And we also discussed um, who was going to uh, uh, moderate and ask the questions. Uh, and the timekeeper because Pastor Buffett was not there and he's he and please keep him in prayer. He had a procedure on yesterday, so he's under the weather. Okay. All right. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And thank you for the work that you guys are doing. We appreciate that um, uh -huh. very much. Okay. So do we have any other reports? I do see a Galaxy S10e um, cell phone and we'll need to know who that is. Is that Miss Peggy? I'm going to take a guess because she was on the cell phone last night. I believe okay. that's uh, Miss Marilyn. Okay. All right. The yeah. education. Miss Marilyn, Marilyn on Galaxy A12. Okay. I think it's Barbara Marilyn. Cooper. Marilyn. She just typed in. It's Barbara Cooper. She just typed in the chat. We appreciate you. Okay, and then the Education Committee, uh, go ahead, Secretary, and read their report, please, and any other reports that I may have left off and they're not able to join us tonight. The Education Committee report, meeting date, April the 27th by Zoom. Committee members, Anthony Jackson, Angelo Anderson, uh, Ms. Forte, Ms. Simpson, Erin Campbell, and Ms. Graggs. Committee members present was Anthony Jackson, Angela Anderson, and Kieran Smith. Meeting note, Chairperson Anthony Jackson began the meeting by thanking the members of the committee for their service and commitment to the branch and to the committee in terms of keeping their membership current, which enabled them to still serve on the education committee. Members was encouraged to reach out to those that they know of who have let their membership aspire or to those who need to become members and encourage them to activate or reactivate their membership. Members of the education committee was encouraged to make themselves available to attend monthly meeting and various city and community meeting held each month. President Pace has stressed the importance of the NACP being represented at these type of meeting in order that we might be educated and informed and able to bring that pertinent information to share with the membership body. Our committee discussed that as the 2021-2022 school year is coming to an end and that the 2022-2023 school year is approaching, we want to start thinking of ways to be involved and maintain a president in the school. Parental involvement and community engagement will be the focus this year in terms of teacher uh, parental uh, teacher environment. I'm not sure what that means. And we want to make sure we find ways to volunteer or to be engaged in our school. Committee members, Karen Simpson was asked to share information regarding the single parent scholarship and the committee discussed networking with our media personnel to get information about the single parent scholarship popularized to help those adults who are single parents and who are going to school. Committee members, at, uh, Committee member Angela Anderson shared that we would like to see the education committee host a forum that would educate, inform, and encourage parents on the necessity of them being visual and present in the school 
and being more of an advocate for their children and also addressing the importance of school truly and providing a family partnership and being parent friendly. Committee members Karen Simpson also added that during the forum, she would like to share information on Arkansas Promise and share the importance of parents being involved in the meeting relating to special education service, such as IEPS and et cetera. Chairperson Jackson encouraged the uh, committee to push the summer school initiative for the school within our unit who are offering summer school. We want to encourage parents that if school, if summer school is offered and recommended, these students qualify understand the importance of them attending the entire section to recruit lost learning. The committee was encouraged to start thinking of ways to meet $500 assessment toward the NACP budget that each committee has been assigned. We are taking the mission for our branch NACP senior spotlight. As of this date, we only received one submission. Teacher appreciation is May the 2nd through May the 6th, and we want to be sure to do something and acknowledge our educators. As summer is approaching, we want to keep our eyes and ears open for education opportunity and opportunity of enrichment for students and make things known and try to get as well, keep our student involved in the case. Submitted by Anthony Jackson, education chairperson, committee chairperson. Okay, good job. And let me add that the senior spotlight has, uh, they did get some more submissions and they are being posted on Facebook and Instagram, so uh, daily, okay? So watch for that uh, appreciation to this education committee doing a great job. Okay, I would like to add before we move on to unfinished and new business is uh, concerning, uh, we do have two openings for chairpersons for the WIN committee, that's women in NAACP, and for the housing committee. OK, so we need chairpersons for those. Also, the religious committee needs members of his committee. That's Pastor Darrell uh, Daniels Jr. And um, you don't have to be a pastor or evangelist or anything to be a part of that committee. If you email him, email me, call me, go to the messenger. Uh, we'll get you in contact with, with, with Pastor Darrell if you are interested, but we do need more. Our committees must have at least three persons on them. And we expect those three people to be active uh, members of the branch, as well as to be actively working with the committee um, to do what the mission is within your committee. So I appreciate you guys for your reports on tonight and we'll move it on. Okay, I presently don't have any unfinished business with the general membership. So we're gonna move on to new business and which is somewhat of an announcement though, the Arkansas King Commission will be hosting the Unity in the Community on Friday, July the 1st, that is 12 to 4 p.m. Today we were down with Vivica Fox down in Dumas, <laughs> as she said, Dumas, Arkansas. <laughs> so that was a great event. And listen, uh, I want you to know that this is an, an amazing opportunity for us to join in and support this event. Mr. Deshaun Scarborough is the um, director, CEO, or whatever you call him, but he's over the, the he's over the Arkansas King Commission and anybody that know about them know that this is a big event. So uh, it's going to be great. There's going to be financial literacy. There's going to be uh, fun and games. There's going to be information targeted towards young people in the park. Um, not sure if there's, they're going to have vendors. They had mentioned vendors, but that's on them. That's not on us or anything like that. And I'm just soliciting your help as the NAACP to support this effort to do all you can. We realize that it's on a Friday. And I didn't really realize that until Ms. Lambert, like, yes, it's Friday. People are working. But if you have a vacation day, you can come and bring your chair. Please do so. Uh, there will be a lot of good entertainment. Uh, my son, G. Pace, will be performing. Uh, there will be the gentleman from Troop. Uh, if some of y'all remember him, 
I did it, but he's going to be here. Uh, he has uh, Lavert. Eddie Lavert is going to be here. Um, Jodeci is going to be here. So listen, y'all, this is a great opportunity. Please, please, please do not miss coming. And when you come, you got to come alive because they generally go on television. They record and we want to welcome them to Monticello for the very first time. It took a lot to get them to come to this area. And since they are here, we are looking to pack that park out. Uh, Mr. Scarborough said, I need 500 people from Tri-County. So that means y'all tell your neighbor, your friends out of state and so forth, come on in that park and let's let's go in there and let's have a good time listening to whatever their program. Uh, yes, they are going to need volunteers for this event, but uh, they were waiting to get past this one in Dumas and then they'll let us know what else they need. But I'm very excited and I did promise him that NAACP would be a part of the activities and we would support. So let's do this. All right. Okay. So next up, we are going to move. Any questions about that before we move forward? Okay. So now what you all been waiting for tonight is our mini town hall meeting concerning voter education and voting instructions, okay? And I'm very delighted that the leaders of the executive team were able to pitch in and to help move this forward. We have our election that's coming up and it's our job as an NAACP to make sure that the public is educated. If you have your phones on beside you and you can share this um, video uh, on Facebook, uh, like and share it, tag someone, then do so because it's our responsibility to make sure that people understand uh, this voting system and understand how important it is for you to vote. I pray that everyone in your household is a registered voter, uh, that you have spoken with your neighbor uh, to help them become registered voters. And we are going to constantly, we're going to drive this voter registration and we're going to continuously educate uh, and have another form so that you'll be ready to vote uh, in the latter part. So I'm, I'm not gonna give anything away. So our first um, speaker tonight, why we vote is going to be presented by Ms. Lou Lambert. So let's all give her a hand as she comes uh, forward tonight to speak. And the church say amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you was you was coming across like you want to have church something. Uh, good evening everybody. Why we vote. Voting is a passion of mine. I've been involved involved in the voting process or in, in the process to get people to uh vote an activist since I was 14 years old. I was in the movement, the marching, the protesting, that type of thing. So it is dear to my heart. I was coming along during the time when people had to pay to vote. So today we need to vote because first of all, it's a right that has been afforded to us. Thousands and thousands of people have died and suffered uh, to get that right. And so many times we take it for granted. We don't really take it serious. But do you not know that um, it was only since 1965 that people of color, especially black people, has really been able to, uh, I'm not going to use the term freely, but the past to the voting system has been a little bit better. We still have a long way to go, but it's just think, that was just a few years ago, 1965. But as of today, any US citizen age 18 and up has the right to cast the vote. Why? Because living in America, this is a democracy, a democratic process. 
Why would you want someone to always make decisions for you when you have the right to put, uh, to have an input, to have an opinion, uh, to voice your opinion? So go out and vote. People were intimidated and murdered and, and that type of thing. And during 1965, like I said, the Federal Voting Act was put into process. So we have a little bit more leeway um, support in being able to vote. Your, vo your voice counts. So many times we don't understand the process. So there, I encourage each of you to educate your household. Let's not be ignorant to the process. Educate the household. What are your rights? What are your requirements? Uh, recruit. It is so easy now to register to vote. So we want to get other people involved. Uh, people like Dr. Martin Luther King. We know the story of how they protest and how they push for the right to vote. And so we want to be able to um, not only to educate ourselves, um, well, we want to be able to go and be educated as to who is running, who are the candidates, what are their platforms, what are they proposing to do. You have that right to know so that you can make an informed decision and then stay involved in the political process. Don't let anything catch you by surprise. Do your research. You can go online. You can go to the library. You can go to the courthouse. So many resources that are available now. So um, even now, the early voting is going on. Practically everybody on this line has gone to cast your ballot. If not, let's get it done. And, and, and make sure your household are voting this during this election. There is one particular website I would like to mention. It is voterview.org. You can go on there, make sure that your address is up to date. You can go and see your sample ballot before you get to the poll, so that if you have any question concerning who are the candidates, why somebody's not on your ballot, that type of thing, you have that opportunity to discuss it before that day. So again, we want to vote because that is our right that has been afforded to us as a U.S. citizen. We living in America, you need to be able to express yourself. Okay. All right. Uh, that was awesome. <laughs> okay. So next we're going to have, uh, I think my agenda calls for Bettina Randolph, who is going to talk to us about um, the difference between the primary elections and general elections. Go ahead, Ms. Randolph. Okay, good evening, everyone. Um, the primary election, which is actually um, approaching, we are doing the early voting right now. It is simply an election where voters go to the polls and just vote for a political party nomination for any given office, or in simpler terms, um, just a way to narrow down some of the candidates. A general election is an election which the candidates are elected into office. Um, today, just to highlight a couple of things, um, today, May 17th, was the last day to request the absentee ballot. And then Friday will be the last day to turn those in. And several people have probably had some concerns of why this person was not on their ballot. They thought they lived in this area, so forth and so on. But a lot of this was due to the redistricting some time ago when it's been discussed over the newspaper, over news, emails, all types of things. So one sees their ballot and does not find a particular person they were looking for. That is the reason why. And like Ms. Lou just said, you can go on voterview.org and um, I have it pulled up. It'll tell you your con congressional district you live in, your judicial district, school district, your state senate district everything you want to know. If you want to vote for school board elections, it'll let you know what zone you are in, why this person was not on your ballot, what township you're in, what ward, so forth and so on. And 
anything you can possibly want to know can be found on photoview.org. And um, I will also highlight that the general election will be Tuesday, November the 8th. And the last day to register, it says October the 9th, but it's gonna be honored on October the 10th because the 9th is on a Sunday. Last day to register for the general election. And um, I did have, someone had a concern. If I do not run in the primary, can't I vote in the general? And the answer is yes. That might affect some people that are not 18 yet. And so you turn 18 in between, you can register, go forth. And if you just didn't vote because you just didn't vote, you can still vote in the general election. Wonderful. And um, another thing we will I highlight is the particular race of the judges not just county judge, but any judge judge races. Um, judges in Arkansas are elected in nonpartisan elections. These elections take place on the same day as the primary election for that particular race in the state. And they take place on the even number of years. The judges must run for re-election if they're seeking that in the nonpartisan election. Arkansas happens to be one of only 12 states that use the nonpartisan elections to select judges. And if no candidate wins the majority, the two candidates with the most votes in, in that will participate in a runoff election, I think is in June. And um, because I think there's one here in Monticello that didn't, I guess, go with either party, Republican or Democratic. And because of that, he's independent. He is not on the ballot right now. He does not have to be, but he will be on the ballot in November. And so that sums up the information that I have for you guys. All right, thank you. All right, next is Ms. Brenda Benz, who is going to share with us tonight uh, where you can go and vote. Okay, good evening, everyone. Just want to uh, remind some of you and let uh, inform some of you that we're already into early voting that started on May the 9th, so it ends on May the 23rd. And you can go to the courthouse for that, uh, for the early voting. Now, as you are aware, the Drew County Election Committee has voted to change the voting site to voting centers. So all the polling sites that are listed, they are now called voting centers. So what that means is you can go to any of the voting centers to vote. You know, for instance, you might be in, uh, you might be from Wilma and you want to uh, come over, uh, might be here in Monticello. So when the elections start on May the 24th, you can not only just run back to Wilma, you can go to these voting centers. And these centers are at the Harkin Center, is located at 527 East McCoy in Monticello. There's First Assembly of God Church. This is at 915 Highway 425 North, Building B in Monticello. The First Presbyterian Church, which is located at 821 North Main in Monticello. The First United Methodist Church at 317 South Main, Monticello, Shady Grove Baptist at 103 Highway 172 in Monticello. Then you can go to the Tiller Library, and that is one of 106 East B Street in Tiller, or you can go to the Wilma School, 2546 Highway 278 in Wilma, or the Monticello Church of Christ, and that's at 278 Highway 425 North in Monticello. And remember, these are now called voting centers, which means that you can go to any of these voting centers to vote. You ain't just got to go to the Hawkins Center. First Assembly of God Church, you can go to any of these voting centers and they should be able to pull you up and vote. You, you don't have to go all across town. You can go, to, you have, as you can see, that you have several to choose from. So it's no excuse for you not to, to exercise your right to vote because you can now go to these voting centers and they can be able to pull you up and you can vote there. Uh, do anyone have any questions? If not, just give me a call later. If you do think of any or any of other NACP uh, members, especially our president, 
uh, we'll be glad to answer any question. If we don't know the answer, we definitely will find out and get those questions to you. I mean, the answers to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, ladies. Reverend Bovington, as she said, um, was unable to uh, be with us on tonight due to some surgery. But uh, I think that what happened, what he was going to discuss with you all was already done in the presentations uh, that were presented. Uh, just to remind you, we did have a uh, ballot alerts. Uh, Ms. Bettina stated it that there were some ballots that had candidates on it that was not was not the right ballot. So if you notice uh, that you have a ballot and those candidates are not in your zone or your ward and so forth, be sure what what they put the uh, the announcement on the door when I when I went for the election. The announcement on the door stated uh, that. Um, be sure to let them know, okay? Let them know so you can cast your vote in the right places. Um, she also mentioned that um, if you were on the Republican ticket, if you were not on the Republican ticket, then in Drew County, we would not be voting for the judge, okay? Not until later. And this, okay, Sanders said, I think this was mentioned earlier, but when is the last day of early voting? Okay, somebody give that date. I really don't know that. It's when is the, the last 23rd. date? The 23rd. May 23rd. May 23rd. Okay. All right. May 23rd. So uh, is the last day of voting. So just be mindful right. of your ballot. Early voting. Early voting. Early voting. Yes. Okay. So because we actually vote on May 24th, right? In the private yes, president. Yes, ma'am. Can I just remind them that the early voting from May, uh, May the 9th to the 20th, you know, is from 6 p.m. And then on Monday is to 5, okay. 5 from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. The election day hours run from 7.30 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. Okay. All right. And now I'm going to share my screen and... Madam President, be, be, before you move on, may I say sure. one thing? Yes, ma'am. Again, if you have not voted, I'm asking that everyone look at your sample ballot before you get there. Because you would you don't know if you have the wrong ballot or not. In many cases, uh, if you don't know what's supposed to be there, so you don't know whether what you have is wrong or not. So okay. um, be sure to pull up your sample ballot and look. And be prepared, bring your ID. Make sure your ID match what is on voterview.org. If it does not, then you have the opportunity. So to avoid a delay, the provisional ballots and that type of thing, just make sure you are prepared. Okay. Our um, PR has put that link in the chat. So you all can actually copy that. If you may, you can copy what these ladies are constantly telling you. So I'm gonna share something because um, we, 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 when you're voting in the primary, you need to be sure that you um, know that there are some uh, that have to get out of the primary in order to get in the general election, as she said. So I wanted to go over here really quick, like, um, and I want to show you who's running for governor, uh, lieutenant governor, attorney general, secretary of state, treasurer, auditor, public lands commission. Some of them are unopposed. So I'm going to go through this real quick so that you can get a visual. A, go look these people up, okay? You have uh, Ricky Dale. Um, let's look here. In the general election for governor of Arkansas, we have Ricky Dale Harrington. Uh, you got Dan Nelson, Elvis Presley, <laughs> Jason Tate, and Michael Woodard, okay? Uh, here we have Anthony Bland. Uh, this is in the Democratic primary. Anthony Bland, Chris Jones, Jay Martin, James Russell, and I can't pronounce Miss May's name, but you all, don't play guessing games. Go look these people up, okay? Because it's important. It's gonna come down to one for that general election. 
The Republican Party only has two, and that's Sarah Huckabee, Sanders, and Doc Washburn. Um, we talked about Ricky Dale already. So let's go down. Okay, I think that is, okay. That's it for now. Then I'm gonna go over, I'm gonna go back and go over to um, the US Senate. I think you need to know this because this touches us in this area. As you take a look at the names here, you see Kenneth Cates, and you can you can go to ballotpedia.org. This is where I'm getting this from. James Garner, Richard Gant, and the Democratic Party, you got Jack Foster. Um, his picture is not here. So I found Jack Foster so y'all can see what he looks like. Okay. That's Jack Foster. I think he was at our political forum. You have Natalie James and Dan Whitfield. For Republican, we have John Boozman. Y'all probably had missed not one commercial that he has. <laughs> and Jack. Boseman. Bozeman, well, okay, I thought they said Boozman on one of the commercials. And Jake Wet, Heath Loftus, and Jan Morgan. Okay. Uh, then you need to go over to let's go. And I'm taking I'm I hope y'all don't mind me doing this because sometimes you don't know their faces, you don't know who's affecting you. And I thought that it was important for you to know these people because they are on some of our ballots, okay? Um, the Republicans candidates, uh, the other ones, and Democratic, you don't have to vote on, but we got Rick Crawford, Jody Shackelford, and Brent Smith. You got Republicans running uh, in the primary for, uh, here you got French Hill and Conrad Reynolds. And it's only one more so on the Republican ticket. Mm, it's a little confusing, but I'm trying to get to Mr. Um, you've got, uh, what's the gentleman name in Wilmer? And the gentleman that is money. Curly Jackson. Yes, Curly Jackson. And his opponent is. Pretty, Chris. Um, Chris. Yes, can't pronounce his name, but he was at our political forum. You guys take a look at that. We have also, we have a circuit, I can't pronounce, I can't say it, circuit judge uh, Quincy Ross, who is running that will affect some of us immediately. And then if you look, she is, his opponent is actually on here tonight, Demetria. And uh, Demetria, forgive me, because I could not, let's show your face. Okay, good good deal. So they'll see your face. And so that's all I really want to point out to you guys tonight so that you can be sure that you know these faces. You go and take a look at their platform and you make an educated decision. And we have the opportunity. This is the first opportunity I think that I've seen in a while that we've had even someone running for a minority running for the governor, okay? So uh, we have quite an opportunity to make history here, okay? All right, our minds are clear. Then we're gonna move on to announcement. Wesley Carnicle is going to step in. He is a member of the PR Communications uh, hey. Committee and he's gonna step in and do our announcements for tonight. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. All right. So, on um, voting, the polls are well, only voting. It's at the courthouse, eight a.m. to six p.m. and May the ninth through the twenty third, which is May. And the can barely read that. The Arkansas Martin Luther King Commission has a community a festival, Unity in the Community on July the 4th, 12 p.m. to 4 p.m. at McCloy Park. Um, the June dinner for 
2022 pageant, June the 3rd through at 5.30 p.m. and June the 5th at 5, oh, 5.30 p.m., excuse me. Read it off an iPhone. It's okay. And June the 5th at 5 p.m., okay. And you can cash up Tony Perry, Mayor of Wilmer. Registration fees are ages 0 to 12, 15, ages 13 to 18 is 25. You can contact, I cannot pronounce that name, at 870, Miss Gully or something. Mm -hmm. uh, and Mayor Perry's um, cash app is Mayor Tap. And but I'll see if I can get that. And then Eddie, I cannot pronounce that last name. Um, it will be a guest speaker at the McCloy, th the Unity in the Community Festival. Okay. On Eddie Friday, July. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Wesley, you're going to be posting these uh, flyers anyway, correct? Yes. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. On the Facebook page. Okay. Okay, now we're going to move on to, um, did you have any other announcements, Wesley, concerning the MPD or anything? Yeah, they're looking, they have some openings. That's on the Facebook page. Let me get that. June the 3rd is when they have, they're looking for, hang on, got to find that now. For um, dispatchers and patrolmen. Okay. Both full time and part time for dispatchers and police officers. Okay. All righty. And that's June the 3rd at 4 p.m. must be submitted. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. I'll give Wesley a hand. We're glad he keeps uh, participating with us. And <laughs> he has his online newspaper. He's a member of the uh, community. So we appreciate him for yep. uh, helping us move things forward. We're going to get smoothed out after a while. Uh, next, yes. uh, we're open for uh, community news. Uh, anybody, any general members have uh, any announcements, church announcement, event that's going on that you would like to announce at this time? President. Yes, ma'am. I would like to announce uh, the Key Flower Order of Eastern Stars is having a calendar fundraiser. Uh, and just, just what it is, is uh, help us with our community service event that we uh, assist family with Thanksgiving, school supplies, and Christmas items. And so what it is, is for the month of June, 2022. And what it is, you pick a date to donate a amount. Like if you pick June 1st, you donate a dollar. If you pick June the 30th, you donate $30. So I'm just asking my, uh, the members and the community just help me, help us keep live order of Eastern Stars with this calendar fun ways. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. And that reminded me that our um, fund, Freedom Fund Committee has a fundraiser. It will uh, look for that for you all to participate. She's, she's not on the line tonight, but please look for that information on your emails so you can support that contest as well. It's going to be good, but we need everyone's help, okay? Mm -hmm. Excuse me, Madam President. This is Ms. Uh, Special Sanders. I have an announcement to um, the Arkansas Poor People's Campaign will be participating um, in a national march um, in Washington, D.C. Um, with Reverend, as you know, Reverend uh, Dr. Barber. He's a member of the NAACP um, as well. He's a national figure. Um, on June 18th, there's going to be a national mobilization. Um, and so if you would like to participate in that, there will be a bus, I believe, leaving from Little Rock. We're trying to get them to come actually to Southeast Arkansas, but we need more people. So if you're interested in that, just let me know. Okay, I'm letting you know. <laughs> let's, let's talk so we can see. What, what are those dates again? Um, it's June 18th in Washington, D.C. Oh, 
pushes it all good. You know, like, <laughs> I already have, a, I have an event. That she can't go to DC. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. All right, you guys. Um, all minds are clear. Do we have any questions or any comments tonight from the membership? Well, I just appreciate your time tonight and uh, continue to watch your emails, continue to be involved. And uh, our motto is bold, involved, and equal. And I am excited, okay? So uh, we need a motion to adjourn this meeting tonight. Abatina Randolph, go ahead, Ms. Lou. I move, Amber, move that we adjourn this meeting. I, uh, Bettina Randolph, second. It's been moved and second that we will adjourn this meeting. All in favor, vote aye. Aye. And you are dismissed. God bless you. <laughs>